Hey everyone, Commander Buck Chuck here, back at uh, some Graviteam Tactics, and today we are playing uh, the Caribou Cell Operation in the uh, Black Snow DLC for the game. Um, so what's cool about this one is, as you can see, we have a bunker, and it is occupied by some soldiers in there don't usually see this kind of uh, fortification. Oh wow, look, I can even see a gun, I think, pointing through there. Not sure what exactly, but either way, we have a pillbox here fortified in a pretty shelled out area. This is turn two uh, of the campaign, but not too, too much fighting has been done, at least judging from the amount of forces that I was left with from the amount of time that I've played. Uh, anyway, here we have a, another fortification. Seems to be... I must have tried to put a machine gun in there, maybe? Or maybe it's just some regular infantry. It'd be awesome if it's... Let's, let's look. Ah, might be command. Command unit? No, just some infantry. Guys of the 223rd Infantry Division. And uh, it's a good thing we have this kind of fortification over here. A lot of trenches and bunkers in this. Uh, okay, yeah, you can see where we fought before by these trenches over here that we had dug. But uh, it's a good thing we have them because, as you can see here, it's an arrival of airplanes. Uh, unless that's ours, uh, which I don't think it is, uh, and that's going to be bad news. Um, and per the store page on the DLC, uh, this is, as I quote, massive use of KV-1S and Churchill 2 tanks. Um, so that's what we're going to be up against here. We do not have very much in the way of anti-tank equipment, if there's a massive use of them, but we're going to make it work. As you can see, the Soviets have launched their attack, indicated by that green smoke. We have a very nice defensive position in terms of the hill, barbed wire, probably some mines. Wow, even anti-tank barriers. And being in the forest certainly uh, complicates things in terms of fields of fire for us, but for advancing in this kind of terrain, this is a nightmare as well. Um, on the bright side, you can get in close by being in the wood line, but very much so hinders your movement and ability to concentrate and attack because you're going to get stuck in the snow if you're a tank plus chopping, you know, running over trees. Infantry is going to get ahead of you, start taking fire. You can't really operate very effectively in the woods as a uh, tank, so... That makes me realize I probably should have put a couple of anti-tank capable units here. But I don't think that this square is at risk of being lost, no. It's not indicated by this black square. We can only lose these ones. So well, I can hope that uh, they don't send armor this way. Sounds like some artillery is going off on this side of the front, which we can lose. So I hope I had put some AT here. I know I have these stugs spread out. They're not going to be very good in this kind of terrain, but at point blank range, hopefully they can do something. This guy's not going to be able to shoot the angle he's at. Hopefully he uh, scoots up. Might have to modify his maneuver control. That might allow him to drive up to this road, get in a better firing position, but we'll see as needed positioned on the road to allow uh, some 
ease of access to movement if we need to, because like I said, moving in the snow as an armored vehicle is not going to be easy. All right, spotted some through the artillery. Die tank gun, 45. Look at all this. Wow, the engineers did a good job chopping down these trees. Created a good field of fire. Better than being completely surrounded by wood line. Probably should have concentrated my forces more. Oh my goodness. All right. Time to, time to go. Good luck. This is probably not going to go well. All hands on deck, everyone shooting. Anyway, this is March of um, 1943. So for some context, for those of you who don't know, the uh, Germans were just mauled at Stalingrad, what many consider to be a turning point in the war. So the initiative is quite clearly not with uh, these guys. So I don't really expect us to win. Wow, close combat. Don't expect us to win, because the basically the strategic level war is totally against us. But, since I control these forces, we'll do what we can. This is very close combat. Other units up. Oh wow, everyone is about to be engaged. Command unit. That sucks. Got some engineers over here of 226th Division. They're gonna have to yeah, open fire. Wow, this is a good shot. Look at this defensive line, these engineers, some machine guns firing off in the distance over there. Probably have guys occupying these. Structures. Yeah, we may do okay. Well, probably not okay, but. <clears throat> See how this side is doing. I haven't checked in over here. I must have contact of someone. I think that means they spotted when they shot that flare up. Ooh, no. Multiple units surrendering. Okay. Ooh, wow, they must have. Yeah, I've been totally overrun. Oh my goodness, that is tough. Certainly neglected this area. Um, 
Let's see if we can maybe get these guys in the fight a little bit. There was a time to use them. It, uh, I can afford that. Losing these mortars is a shame, but I think these units are just here to defend our flank anyway. And to defend it, they are. Guy wanted to work for National Grid or something, but he's here instead. Tough. Still haven't seen Soviet armor, it doesn't look like. Force though. Okay, that's good. I see some machine gun fire breaking. Ooh. Okay. Well, not the best thing in the world, like killing tanks, but we are certainly thwarting the Soviet infantry offensive. Ah, oh, look at this. This is a mortar man's dream. I sure hope we have some batteries firing and massing fire over here. Not always what Gravitine does, but one can hope. Wow. See, these are things that only the, the, you know, AI would do in a video game, not so much in real life. So when the AI does stuff like this, think of it as a counterbalance to when your units aren't doing what you want them to, because I mean, Sometimes I do do a little bit of micro just to avoid cluster like this. I mean, look, look at this. Wheels are flying everywhere. All these dead guys. This is... If you're the Soviets, you do not want this to be you. <laughs> so... If my guys retreat or do something dumb, I'll give them some slack. Because they, they are taking some initiative here. Wow, we have some pretty strong defenses here. I might have underestimated our own strength. I say as if our right flank isn't crumbling. We are a pillar of fire though. Wow. Never, um, this is actually my first playthrough of this. A lot of times I've uh, done videos, it's on operations that I've played before, or even I've played beforehand and done some research on, but this is a first time playthrough and I'm glad I'm sharing it because this is a awesome Gravitine DLC. Again, it's Black Snow, Caribou Cell. This would be a well, will be great to play as both the Soviets and the Germans. Now I see the uh, tactical difficulty facing the Soviet operations. This is, whew. It's a kill zone. That's why ter terrain analysis is everything, because had I probably done a little bit better, well, you know what, whatever. I occupied solid positions. Can't hold everywhere. That's the difficulties of this time of the war. The line is thin. You do what you can with what you've got. Same thing for the Soviets. You can see how... I always do that. Sorry. Anyway, oh, I haven't seen this uh, anti-tank gun in operation. Must be doing a detriment to the Germans. Not that you want to get shot by, but anyway, the um, 
losses the Soviets take in these kind of massive offensives that they do. I mean, this is just turn two of a 28 turn operation, so there's going to be a lot more. And if you look, oh, there's some Soviet armor. Not really a problem yet, but it will be. Look at the scale, though, of combat here. The Soviets and the Germans on the Eastern Front faced like just a meat grinder constantly. With hundreds of thousands and millions of casualties. Exponentially larger than casualties Americans have accrued in any war, or most of the Allies for that matter, except maybe Britain and France. But don't quote me on any of that. But anyway, the, the, the sentiment is on the Soviet and Germans, you know, people, this kind of combat and conflict changes the everything afterwards. Very close combat here with these guys. This must be the captured front units, yeah. I wish I could see the details of the advancing Soviet units too. Like what unit they are. I mean, I guess we'll be able to see at the end. The end of the game. Or, end of this tactical battle, rather. large Soviet force coming through this uh, center area. A couple of wings, but the main thrust, if you will, is just trying to kind of break through the center of our lines right here, split us in two, which would be bad. So they are doing well. We lose here. Mortar. Shame. A couple more captured front line units. Carnage, though. I couldn't imagine having a, having you know, been in the military and deployed, having done anything like this. assaulting in this kind of terrain or facing these kind of numbers. This kind of firepower on either side. I mean, having a drill weekend in this kind of terrain sucks. That's eating MREs and having your phone and getting to go home on a, you know, Sunday after, uh, sometimes we do them from Wednesday to Sunday instead of the stupid two, two days you signed up for, but anyway, I won't get political. Either way, <laughs> it's a first world problem compared to having to go through something like this. War is a terrible thing, you know? You know, like I always try to praise the uh, developers of a game like this. Not very many do it. Try to uh, make something historical like this. Guys with the PPSHs, you can hear them yelling. 
this is where Graviteam is shining, you know, despite some of the AI nuances. It made me just go through that entire rant of how I could not imagine fighting in these conditions. Advancing, I mean, I've gone, you know, hunting or been out in drill and you come across barbed wire and it sucks because you rip your clothes and you get to take your time because you're just chilling. But when you're under fire, an obstacle like barbed wire is, uh, can be the difference between life and death. Again, look at that fortified position. You do not want to be, I mean, on either side, you don't really want to be attacking it, and you don't want to be defending it. That's the most rational thing to do as the attacker would be to concentrate fire here to whatever extent you can, given your command structure. Well, it's still occupied. I don't know if they're just looking around, but it's a prime target either way. Yeah, I wonder what those tanks are up to. Well, we are getting contact in the middle line. This is kind of a World War One-esque no man's land type terrain. Or current Ukraine-like. Um, let's see, it's in Vol Volkov. Or the Volkov front, at least, is what the Soviet arm or, uh, army group is over here. So, I assume I should check where Volkov is. The front between Voronovo and Ladva villages. So... So, I checked. It's, um, northern Russia, near, um, the Leningrad front, is what the Volkov front is. That's where this Soviet offensive is taking place with, uh, I guess part of these strategic operations to relieve the siege of Leningrad. Also, it's like 30 degrees or negative one Celsius. with snow, so pretty deep snow, I think. Tough to uh, walk in, so pretty tough to fight in. Front is active all around. Here, some kind of cannon fire. Could be the enemy tanks. Could be. Oh, yeah. okay. That looked like there was fire being taken over there. Oh, nice. Hans is gonna die. Let's see how our stoves are doing. Ooh, shooting. That's what I like to see. And moving. Shoot, move, and communicate. They have radios, so one would hope they are using them. I know there's an indicator to see if they're receiving units, but, uh, or uh, receiving orders. Oh, yeah, he has a link. It's good. You can see here, radio link on the left hand side. It's blue. 100% combat sustainability, also good. High morale, eager. Regular, not green. Observability, which is what he can see, I believe, is not great. But he's buttoned up. And it's all they have really have is this periscope. And we're in the woods. And it's cold and snowy, so looks fair. Good sight quality. And most importantly, putting down fire at a distance of probably 500 meters, 600 meters, which is almost ideal range for this. I mean, it could be optimized if it were shorter, but given the circumstances of, I like to create distance between us and them since they have numbers, 
This is an optimal engagement range for now. Yet to see the Soviet tanks. I should probably take a look over there. I keep hearing some... Oh, what else do we have? Pack guns? That's good. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, one of ours. Our pack guns. Okay. I don't know who told him to do that, but it didn't come from me. He better not be retreating. But, I mean, if he is, I guess I'm glad he's taking the equipment with him. He must be retreating. Yeah, that seems like a retreat. No, oh, okay, they're alive. Alive to fight another day. I can live with that. Don't know what the heck he thinks he's doing. This guy's got a PPSH. And a MG-34 on his back. Okay, hero. And nonetheless, going forward. Advancing. Maniac. Going through the barbed wire. Into the mud and the trenches. I'm up, he's easing him down, you know? That's what they'd uh, say to you in the army. That's how long you can, as a infantryman, sprint before you have to hit the ground, which I love that Gravitine does. Let's see if we can get someone doing the combat sprint. Sometimes they do it for obscenely long periods of time, which is when I think they earn their medals. There's some mortar fire, machine gun fire, rifle fire. Everyone's doing their job at least. Some Soviet units must be, oof, yeah, there we go. Fire on the line, smoke, rounds hitting all over here in our kill zone. Soviet breakthroughs though, still a little bit on that flank. Not heavy though. Tanks over here and Kind of engaging, not really, but what can we do? Cheating someone by the look of things. Captain Beeble over here and his radio operator are scrambling around. Getting overrun. What? I should be proactive and try to get him out of harm's way. Come on, guys, let's, um. Move you here. A lot of times I neglect my uh, guys. A lot of times I go way too overboard. So it's all about balance. This guy shooting his revolver. Oh yeah, he is. Oh. Some kind of officer with a judge by judging by the hat and the pistol must be a platoon commander at least, but I would wager maybe even a company level officer. Anything higher is a gift. Breaking unit cohesion is what wins tactical battles. Whoever retreats or doesn't retreat, we could fall back and lose ground, but if ultimately their forces lose fire superiority on this flank and don't capture enough ground, then mission success. And we still have guys either falling back or, okay, guys in reserve. Our second line of defense in a much better position with support closer at hand. 
so we're doing pretty good. I wonder how long we're supposed to hold for. Because I could be doing really bad if we have to hold for like all 23 turns. This is going to be a long one. I'm going to have to go through and edit this. It's going to probably be a multi-day one as well. It's exhausting. Anyway, I'm sorry, I've been neglecting kind of key battle updates. Sometimes I just get lost in Graviteam. Here's some engines. Who's on the move? Oh no, it sounds like airplane engines. Oh, it is. And it's not a friendly airplane. Is it, actually? By God. I was wrong. It's friendly airplanes. They look like Messerschmitts or Falkwolfs. They're not Stukas for sure, but. Oh, I'm gonna get. Someone will tell me. Look at that artwork. Little heart. Nice detail that the devs put in. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's friendly aircraft. Well, I must have... I'm probably expected to do a lot better than I'm doing then. Okay, I gotta learn how to stop doing the shift. Oh, wow, well, anyway. That is good news, if there ever was some... Take out some tanks, or... These guns aren't much of a threat, but why not kill them when you can? Whew. This and that pig pile of units. They're doing well. Well, the Germans are doing well. Oh, the smoke. You can hear those plane engines roaring overhead. advancing. Don't give it to him. Soviet has always been known as a voracious fighter. The fighting prowess of the early to late war Soviet infantrymen should not be understated. Highly motivated soldiers. Not always, of course, but just like any military. Overall, a very effective fighting machine, despite their losses. It's a very different area than wars today. Bears resemblance of the drone footage you see of the Eastern Front in Ukraine and Russia. Which again puts it more into perspective. I wonder what my airplanes are doing. Hey, they are just now taking a pass over enemy lines. Flying over enemy lines as did Snoopy in his Red Baron battles. Oh my, okay. This is nice.
well, if anything, I'm going to do a pause here. This is probably a pretty long video, so we'll make it a two-parter. And for the second part, we'll see what these planes do. And I'm going to look into what kind of plane they are. I love seeing air support in this game. And in real life, too, as a soldier, is what you want to see. If you're the uh, not on the receiving end. close to his target so it's a good sign has an effect on the tactical initiative anyway thanks for watching till next time